Welcome to Easy Eats. My name is Chef Eve DeShane, and today we're in the Greener Village's Learning Kitchen with Trevor Thurrett, Realtor for the Right Choice Realty. Thank you for joining us today, Trevor. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Right on. So, Trevor, as a real estate agent, I guess you're, you're fairly new to the game. Can you tell me what brought you to it and what you did before that? So, I've only been uh, in real estate for the last two years. Uh, always been a bit of a uh, plan of mine to, to get into the, the real estate game, but uh, previously I was in sales way back in the day, but because of my life and just how things worked out, it made the most sense for me to be local. I used to travel all over the country, I'd be gone for two weeks at a time uh, sometimes. So it was one of those things where if I could be in town, I have a one and a half year old at home now, I have a wonderful fiance that I need to be here for. So. Perfect. So let's talk about that. You joined it for a better uh, work-life balance. Uh, do you feel that that's what a lot of realtors go into the into this line of work for? Uh, there's sometimes not a great work-life balance, even though I'm at home, which is better than previous. Yep. It's uh, it's long hours. There's no days off, right? So you really have to love what you do. Um, but I mean, a lot of people have come on uh, over the last little while, and I think that's because there's, you know, they, they felt there was a lot of sales going on, so there was probably money to be had. Uh, at this point, we have 375 realtors in Fredericton at last count, so that's a lot. Okay, so uh, you said that your previous job was in sales. Can you tell me how you take the previous job and kind of relate it to what you're doing. You, you're still in sales, but we were kind of chatting previously and you said that it's not the same type. Can you explain to me the difference? Um, so, I mean, it is a bit uh, in that sales realm because you're certainly getting to know someone, getting to understand them, what they need, what they want. That's always the way with sales. But the, what I was saying is the difference is it's not sales so much as I don't necessarily want to sell you on a property. I need to make sure that the property fits for what you want to do. I want to make sure that home is the right home for you and your family. So it's not so much sales, it's about understanding my client. So Trevor, you, you started your, your realty career right at the top of that bubble of the pandemic. Uh, can you tell me what kind of trend we're moving into now? So what we saw is, uh, sales went through the roof, prices went through the roof. Over COVID, um, things really changed in the real estate market. And, and now, I mean, we're moving to something completely different because for a while, it was that this area, New Brunswick as, a, as a, an entire province was very much depressed. I mean, we didn't see prices move for 10 years. So when that change starts to happen and everybody starts to move home or move to a, a more isolated community, well, let's say, uh, you know, in comparison to Ontario, for yep. instance, um, then it makes a shift so that people recognize how great New Brunswick actually is. And so when I came on, it was, it was very hot, very heavy, very constant. Um, and now things have started to slow down as interest rates rise um, and people can't afford necessarily the house they could there because the difference between say a, a 2% interest rate and a 6% interest rate could mean $30,000 over four or five years. So it's a lot of money and that's a big change so people can't necessarily afford what they could previously. So I think really what we're going into now is probably a little more traditional of a market where there's not so many multiple offers. You're not having to uh, you know, gouge people's eyes out to get to that next house. Yep. Um, whereas it was really pretty crazy before. So. Well, that's right. The properties around my neighborhood were going sight unseen, and uh, we were, and uh, a lot of us were like, geez, I wonder who got suckered into buying that old spot right. or whatever. Um, touching on uh, interest rates and stuff like that, I know that they're climbing higher and higher. For first home buyers, how much harder is it now to get a home if you're not making? six figures sure uh, it's certainly that's that's who's feeling the crunch is because there's more and more people who are looking for a place to go looking for a place to live um, and so that's bringing the bottom up and that's making it so there's a real supply and demand issue in the sub three hundred and fifty thousand dollar range where people just can't get a house However, because the, the interest rates have rose, the people who could afford a $500,000 house previously can now only afford a $300,000 house. So there's this real crunch in that range that's making it more difficult. So I okay. say that things will be a little more traditional. They're a little more traditional market in the higher end, and in the lower end, there's really still a, a lot of uh, pressure 
to uh, to get into a place. So you still see multiple offers in the lower priced houses. So, I, you know, frankly, I think it's becoming harder and harder for those people. Okay. Yeah. Um, you're not just a realtor, but you also uh, dedicate your time with a lot of volunteerism and things like that. Let's touch on a few things that you've been doing and wh what's your latest uh, volunteer uh, kind of uh, commitment? We are very community focused. And so one of the things, for instance, that uh, Dave and Amy do is they sponsor the uh, Wiseman in both the Grant Harvey Center and the Willie O'Ree Center. So they're actually providing the coffee cups. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but for every single coffee that's sold, the, the Wiseman didn't have to buy that cup and therefore that money gets put back into their pocket, which in turn supports the community as a whole. Um, so that's, that's one of the things we do. One of the things that I do uh, that I'm really passionate about, that I really enjoy is getting into, it's uh, Kim's Kitchen is the location and it's Kat's Kitchen who does the involvement. So it's essentially a school lunch program. And what we do is uh, for an hour or two, once a month, we go in and we make lunches. So it's fantastic. You get to put together maybe you know a few hundred lunches to go out to kids in need at schools. And absolutely, it, it, it is. The, uh, the community kitchens, is, and that they partnered up, and we partner with the community kitchens all the time uh, because we're, we're in the business of feeding people yeah. that are in need. Um, the, it's a great program, and I was lucky enough to be part of that a few years back when I was the chef at the at the uh, community kitchen. Nice. And it's great to see it how it's grown, yeah. and it's also neat to see the need that uh, and the student involvement and all that stuff. And it's nice to see that there's people like you guys with the right choice that are coming in and that are providing that type of support, uh, not only just financial because anyone can throw money at a problem, but actually being there on the on the ground floor or with in the trenches making those lunches and seeing the impact that those students ha uh, get, right? Yeah, it, very much being there, being part of it goes a long way. October is Student Hunger Month, oh. which is, uh, I, I wasn't sure if you were aware, and that's why the uh, Cat's Kitchen and Kim's Kitchen are doing these Stuff the Buses events. Um, we here at the Greener Village are part of the uh, breakfast program run by the province. Yep. We, uh, we deliver everything around. Oh, nice. So, uh, not the lunches that's that's the soup kitchen that's cat's kitchen that's those guys that's they've got that well under hand mm -hmm. and they're doing a wonderful job they we're do. just there to support so you guys are part of the stuff the bus at Nashville Oxys. I know that they're doing it not just at the superstore in Nashville Oxys, but other spots as well uh, yeah, but I'm sure there too. are there any real other challenges that you have faced with this kind of uh, program um, so this will be our first time uh, in the Stuff a Bus program. I actually I shouldn't say that. This will be my first gotcha. time. The Right Choice Realty has done it before. Um, but this will be my first time through. So I can't really speak to the challenges we will face. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure. But I can tell you that the reason we, we went to that was because of uh, like a lack of pumpkins to be able to deliver to our clients. The fact that we had 700 or you know six to 700 people that we were going to deliver those to, it made it uh, very difficult to not only source pumpkins to be able to do that, but then the time constraints that are put on that. You know, we were just talking about the market, and that's something where, you know, you've got to be able to service those clients whenever they need it, right? That's the problem with the work-life balance. Is yep. people often need to see houses in the in the evenings and on the weekends and stuff like that. So finding the time to get out, bring your entire office out of the office and put us on the road driving from house to house to house all over the greater Fredericton area. Not only was it hard to get the pumpkins, but it's hard to get the, the manpower to do that. So you were talking about sourcing pumpkins. We don't have to source as many, and we're lucky people bring them to us, and not only pumpkins, but squash and stuff. So today, because it's fall and it's harvest season, I thought I would show you how to make a lovely uh, carnival squash or a winter squash soup. So we'll make this winter squash soup when we come back. Welcome back to Easy Eats. My name is Chef Eve and we're here in the Greener Village's Learning Kitchen with Trevor Thurrett from the Right Choice Realty and we are going to show him and you guys how to make uh, a lovely winter squash soup. So awesome. first thing we're going to do uh, Trevor is we're just going to put this to a, a medium heat and I'm going to add probably about two tablespoons of butter to that right now and we're just going to let that melt out. 
No, I don't, I don't generally have butter around. Margarine as a substitute work? Any type of oil or fat, I guess. Okay. So if you've got uh, oil, that works great. Uh, if you've got margarine, absolutely. It doesn't really matter what type of oil. Um, if you've got bacon fat and you are not a, looking to make a vegetarian soup, it'll work in there just as well, too. Right, okay. So while that's melting right here, we're going to get our... Uh, I've got one medium onion that I've diced. I've got a couple cloves of garlic right here as well. Um, I grabbed uh, some celery today that I've got from the garden. So you're going to notice that there's some leaves on it. Right. But uh, you can use the celery leaves. And that's something that people really don't realize. Everyone's no just kind of thrown those out. And we're talking about uh, kind of shoring up the dollar and making your dollar stretch when it comes to food. Yeah. These are perfectly great. The ones that you buy at the store, taste them first because they might be a little bit bitter. But the ones you get from your garden, and this is where we got ours today, right. are packed full of flavor. So I don't throw anything out from the celery other than the root itself. And even then, I, I've i caught myself planting it to grow more celery. So. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, I had no idea about the leaves. That's terrific. Right on. So, and then we're going to grab a couple cloves of garlic. Sure. And then we've got our, uh, what we we're using today is that we're using carnival squash. So carnival squash is a lot like an acorn squash. It's got the same kind of shape. It's just, it's called a carnival squash because it's got all these lovely colors on it. Yeah, traditionally I would not think of a squash looking like that. So I think we usually, I mean, I'd pick up a spaghetti squash, for yep. instance. Uh, can you use any squash in this recipe? Pretty much. Uh, spaghetti squash, not so much, just because of the way the squash is built and the fibers in it. So a spaghetti squash is different. And the cool thing about spaghetti squash is once it's baked, you grab your fork and you scrape it, mm -hmm. and it comes out like spaghetti. Yep. So you'll find that that texture in here doesn't quite work. So you kind of want it like a meaty squash. So an acorn squash, a butternut squash, this carnival squash, uh, even pumpkin works great in this soup because pumpkin is a squash, right? All right, of course. Okay. Perfect. So that's all melted now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my onions, my celery, and my garlic just like this. And I'm just going to let it sweat. So by sweat, I mean just kind of marry all the flavors together and ex and make it all nice and glossy exactly like when you sweat you get kind of shimmery and and and, uh, and stuff sure. we're looking for the same thing here so we're not adding a whole lot of color we're just kind of sweating everything out just like that and then while everything is sweating out we're going to uh, break into the squash I'm going to show you how to uh, to properly uh, work and clean a squash because it might not be too apparent. Well, and also squash is generally quite hard, so getting into the squash can exactly. Be so the first thing you need is a good sharp knife, of course, um, and then a nice solid, and make sure that you're working. And then we're going to cut the top off just like this, and then I'm going to cut the bottom off, and now I've got a nice solid structure that I can work from. All right. Okay. These here will go into the compost, and then I'm just going to run my knife across the squash just like this trying to keep as close to the skin as possible without losing any of the uh, any of the meat. There we go. Just like that. And we try to get everything. Um, you can use a peeler if you want. It just takes a little bit longer. So sure. you wouldn't lose as much of the meat, but but yeah, it, it, but again, the squash is hard and depending on when you get them because the fresher they are, the softer they are and then as they get older, they'll get the, the uh, skin on the outside will get a little bit firmer. Get a little more tough so there we go. So we've got that just like that. I'll move that off. Now I see the squash seeds there. It uh, makes me think of pumpkin seeds. Yeah. Roasting pumpkin seeds. Yes, so sir. Is that something that you would do with a squash? Would that kind of give you the same result? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the squash seed, pumpkin seed, it's all the same type of seed. Okay. Um, it will. Uh, some may be a little bit more... Uh, Maybe a more, a little more acidic or a little bit more uh, tartar, but okay. all you got to do is roast it with a little bit of salt, pepper, uh, a little bit of olive oil. Nice. And they're fantastic. So right now I've just cut it in half, mm -hmm. and then I'll just take my fingers and we'll just kind of run through like this, trying to get as many seeds. And you want to get rid of all of this stuff inside. That's not, it's not unedible. It's just not very appetizing. Gotcha. So there we go. And then all I'm going to do now is we're going to save these seeds, and yeah, I'm going to use them. I'll put them through a colander. I'll clean all of this muck off of them, and then uh, I'll dry them out a little bit, and then I'll season them with some salt and pepper and toss them in a little oil, nice. and then we'll, we'll roast them bake. off. You can even use it as a garnish for this soup that we're making. Oh, wow. Or you can just roast them up and uh, snack on them while you're watching the football game. That'd be terrific. 
There you go. So we've got that just like this. And all we're going to do now is we're just going to dice it up into smaller chunks. So the smaller chunks, the smaller you make your chunks, the quicker your soup will cook. Mm -hmm. And then the quicker you'll have it. So uh, there we go. We're just going to. Now I don't have a ton of experience uh, making soups myself. Yep. So how long would we expect it to take? You say it could be quicker, it could be slower. What's the general time frame? Um, you're looking at about half hour, 40 minutes to make a soup, an hour tops. Okay. Um, it all depends on what type of soup you're making as well and, and the, uh, how hard your vegetables are. So your squash aren't as hard as a carrot, so it'll cook, the cooking times will be a little bit different. So now we're just going to add our squash. <coughs> so I've added to this probably about two pounds of squash or two squash mm -hmm. is a good kind of ratio right there. Then we're just going to stir it up just like this. Then I'm going to add a little bit of sweetness. So um, you can use anything really, but because uh, we're in New Brunswick and we make a lot of maple syrup, and uh, so I'm just going to add probably about a tablespoon or so. And again, this is by eye, really. It's about as sweet or as, as tart as you want it. You don't even you have to use sugar or anything. You can use brown sugar if you wanted to kind of mimic that. You can mm -hmm. use honey if you had honey. Well, that's I, th I heard that you were a honey guy. As we talked earlier, you had mentioned honey. Well, we do. Uh, here at the Greener Village, we have uh, five hives, mm, wow. and I'm the, I'm, I'm the beekeeper as well. Oh, so, uh, yeah, all things food here at the Greener Village other than growing it, which I do have a little bit to do with, but uh, I'm more about the harvest yeah, at the end. So yeah, I think everybody would have maple syrup. I mean, that's a New Brunswick staple, of course. Absolutely. So we've got this going just like this. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to add some uh, chicken stock to mine. And the only reason why I'm using chicken stock today is because I made chicken stock yesterday with some scraps. So I have it to use. Okay, if you're trying to go full vegetarian with this, then we would put margarine instead of butter. Mm -hmm. And we would go with a vegetable broth or a vegetable stock instead. And this would make it vegan. But if we're just making sure. it here because with what we have around, of course, then we're just what's available. Exactly, we're going to add probably about a liter and a half of stock. I love the idea of using bacon grease as your as your foundation. Right? Well, no, absolutely, and you're just building flavor, and that's what's important about soup is you're always starting with a base of flavor. So your soup is only as good as the ingredients that you're putting into it, of and the the way you're building those ingredients. So anybody can be a great cook as long as you're following the steps and you're using really good food. And here at the Greener Village, we're lucky because the community provides us with food and the community provides us with some fantastic food. Awesome. So all we're gonna do now is we are going to let this simmer. We're gonna let that simmer for about 15, 20 minutes until everything gets soft. We're gonna let this uh, pot come up to uh, simmer and do what it needs to do. And we'll be back after these few messages. Welcome back to Easy Eats. Again, we're in the Greener Village's Learning Kitchen, and today I'm with Trevor Turret from The Right Choice Realty. Uh, welcome back, Trevor. Our soup is almost done. So, our squash soup can be served as is, with the chunks, just like this. It's great, just like that. But traditionally, a squash soup is pureed, and it's really nice because a nice squash soup is nice and velvety on the tongue. So, I'm not gonna let you get out of here without doing any kind of work. So, I'm gonna get you to grab our immersion blender right here. Okay. And I'm just gonna roll get it. you to, yeah, roll up your sleeves. Yeah, I'm not, I didn't get you to put covered. the apron on for nothing. Yeah, yeah, perfect. All right. All right, and you're just gonna grab the immersion blender. Yes. I'll just grab it for you right here. Thank you. And all we're gonna do is we're just going to puree it. If you don't have an immersion blender, you've got a blender at home. Yep. And you just kind of toss the soup a ladle full at a time into the blender and then you just puree it up. Okay, perfect. So Thank there you. we go. So we're just gonna puree that up until it's nice and smooth. So just work it around the pot, just like that. So I'm, I'm tempted to pull this out. So you could, yeah, you could pull it out a little bit, but don't let it break the surface, because if you do break right. the surface, then everyone's going to see us get soaking wet with a spray of soup. So this is great. Uh, you, like we were saying before, you can use any kind of squash that you want. Right. And if you don't want to eat it as a soup, this makes a great pasta sauce as well. Oh, terrific. Okay. So yeah, if you've got like any kind of tortellinis or spaghetti or anything like that, it just on top because I know that you mentioned that you're not a big soup eater so uh, yeah 
it's different ways of eating it. It's a beautiful way to do it. My daughter loves uh, spaghetti, so using this as a, as a sauce for that would be fantastic. And not only that, you were saying that you're a busy guy. This freezes is great as well. So you freeze it up into portions, right. you put it into the freezer, and then when you need it, you take it out. You can heat it up in the pot again, you can put it in the microwave. For a guy like you that's on the go, well then it's easy enough, you just take it out frozen, and by lunchtime it should be thawed enough for you to warm and eat. That's perfect. The more times we can use the same meal in the run of a week, the, the better. Absolutely. It looks like we're almost done there. I'm just going to grab that from you and just kind of give it a little bit of a finesse. I kind of turn it into my trolling motor oh, here. There you go. And try to get all the bigger chunks, just like this. And there we go. Oh, fantastic. What a difference a bit of experience makes. A little bit, yeah. And there we go. I think that's pretty much it. We're just going to take that off move that off to the side and then we've got this lovely pureed soup just like this and there you are sir put that down and there you are and let me know what you think oh that's fantastic it's not bad eh? that's so good and what we haven't even done yet is we haven't even seasoned so I'm just gonna season it with a little bit of salt and pepper and again you season at the end with salt and pepper because as it's cooking, if you put salt at the beginning, it, everything evaporates, so it'll just get saltier and saltier. Wow. So what you really want to do is just kind of season everything at the end. A chef of mine had always told me that you season 10 times before it's perfect. A long analogy just to say a little can go a long way and always put a little bit and taste so you don't over season. Um, so fantastic soup. You clearly have a lot of experience in it. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I mean, as much as you've told me a little bit about what goes on here, tell me about how you got here. Tell me about your past. My past? Well, um, I've come to this kind of by accident. I w was going to university, but I had a part-time job in the kitchen washing dishes, and I saw how everyone was having fun. Right. And then I thought to myself, do I want to spend my life in a classroom, or do I want to have fun? So I decided, you know what, I think I'm going to just kind of leave the school idea behind and try to find myself like anybody in their early 20s would do. Oh, wow. And uh, I moved to Ottawa and I started cooking. Oh, wow. And I liked it so much that I had a million questions. So I said, well, you know what, I'm going to go to school and do this. So that's what brought me from Ottawa to the East Coast. I went to Charlottetown. Back to and, school again. And back to school again, <laughs> exactly. Back to school and... Uh, yeah, I fell in love with the Maritimes, and uh, and I've lived here in the Maritimes ever since, and uh, found myself uh, working at the Delta here in Fredericton, oh, but okay. looking for, like yourself, a better work-life balance. So the soup kitchen was hiring, mm -hmm. and I thought, this is great. I can share what I have with people who really need the oh, food. Really appreciate it. And then I worked there for a while, and it was very, very rewarding, but then the opportunity to come and show people how to cook for themselves opened up here at the Greener Village and I've been here ever since. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, it was a pleasure having you on. A uh, pleasure finding out what you guys are doing in the community. Uh, uh, realtors don't just sell homes, but they sell, well, they don't sell houses, they sell homes, I guess. I like to say we, we create community. And then you create community and, and you're giving back to the community as well with all your, with all your philanthropy, which is fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity of being on. Uh, no worries. Thank you.